Hello everyone, it's me again and I'm happy to come your way. You know, so we are going to be looking at something very, very important. By the way, I hope that the videos that I've been putting out there is helping you guys to um, attend your interview and do well in your interview. You know, um, so continue to uh, let me know how that has helped you. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at something very vital. Sometimes when you go for interview, they will ask you something like, what are the vitamin K dependent clotting factors? Or they may say, list vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Okay, so we are going to look at vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Once again, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Obodo. I've been working in the UK as a specialist biomedical scientist, and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. So today I'm going to start off by telling you that remember that we have intrinsic, we have extrinsic pathway. We have intrinsic pathway, then we have common pathway. And also remember that each of these very clotting factors, they depend on each other. So this one will be activated, followed by the other one, followed by the other one. And the end point will be the formation of a conversion of the fibrinogen to fibrin. Then there will be clot. Now, in some, some of these very clotting factors in this very casket, they depend on vitamin K. Therefore, vitamin K play major role in the activation of the clotting casket and also they play a major role in the activation of the clotting factors and what it means then is that if there's any deficiency in vitamin k it can affect these very clotting factors that depend on vitamin k and that is why you know it is very very vital and vitamin k the source of vitamin k is mainly green leaf like lettuce and spinach so what are the, what are these very factors then that can you know de that depend you know mostly on vitamin K? You have about six of them. You have number one. You have factor two. Number two, you have factor seven. Number three, you have factor nine. Number four, you have factor ten. Number five, you have protein C. Number six, you have protein S. So these clotting factors, they are vitamin K dependent clotting factors. What it means then that if there is any deficiency in vitamin K, it will affect these very clotting factors. And the effect on these very clotting factors will affect the overall clotting casket. You see it now. And that is why if you look at something like anticoagulant, like when we are talking about PTNR or APTT, if you've not watched the video, you can watch the video that I've made on that. Now, so when you look at this very PT and APTT, we had already mentioned about the fact that um, PT measures uh, extrinsic pathway, APTT measures intrinsic pathway. And we also look at the fact that um, warfarin kind of um, target mostly extrinsic pathway and the heparin target mostly about intrinsic pathway. Anyway, so, but I also want you to know that there are some anticoagulant that what they do is to attack vitamin k and these anticoagulant are called vitamin k antagonists and what are they you have warfarin so warfarin they are called vitamin k antagonists in other words they attack vitamin k and that is how they are able to function to prevent blood clotting or to delay blood clotting because this vitamin K plays a major role in the formation of clot. So what they do is to attack it and that will lead to a delay. As we see, we will do PTNR or maybe APTT. Okay? So how does heparin function? So the way heparin function is that it does a lot of things. One, remember, before I say that, remember that in the clotting uh, uh, pathway, when you get to the common pathway, you have prothrombin. From prothrombin, which is your factor 2, by the way, from prothrombin, you now have thrombin, okay, which is now the active form of your factor 2. So from prothrombin, you have thrombin. And from thrombin, then there can be formation of fibrinogen. And from the fibrinogen, you can then have fibrin. And that is a clot. Now look at what heparin does. What heparin does is it will activate it will activate the production of antithrombin. So from the word antithrombin, that means something that works against the thrombin, antithrombin. So once heparin activates antithrombin, that will affect thrombin formation. You see it now. And again, in doing that, it will, it will prevent the formation of prothrombin to thrombin. And also, 
Help Adam will also prevent formation of fibrinogen to fibrin. And that is how they are able to function. And again, remember that warfarin again is what it does that it will attack all the vitamin, it will it kind of attack or have effect on the vitamin on the synthesis of vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Again, which are factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, factor 10, protein C, and protein S. So that is how this very warfarin or heparin can be able to associate with vitamin K dependent clotting factors. So, but the main thing here is that what are the clotting factors that depend on vitamin K? Factor 2, factor 7, factor 9, factor 10, protein C, and protein S. So here you go. When you go for your interview and they ask you that question, you now know the answer. You take good care of yourself. If you do have any question, put it in the comment section and I'm happy to answer that. Please, can I also ask you to subscribe and share with your friends and family. Thank you very much till I come back here again. Bye.